Okay, we're taking a moment here to look at the fundamentals of a wood cook stove. Uh, most wood cook stoves work off of the same principle. Um, this particular stove is a meal master stove. It was built in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, you've got a firebox inside here um, where you build your fire and, and you know to get your heat. Uh, directly underneath it, you have a place for your ashes to come down. This one here, we've made a little ash pan to put inside of it. Just makes it a little easier to clean out. If you don't have an ash pan, you can always just take a shovel and scoop out your ashes and put them in a bucket. Now, a lot of these stoves, when they were first come out, uh, you could burn wood or coal in them. Uh, so you had what they call a shaker here. You take a handle with a square opening in it and you put it over the, the shaker and you uh, shake it back and forth. And what that does, it takes the sediment and the finer ashes and drops them through, which allows the airflow to, um, you know, to come up through easier. And now, a lot of these old stoves, after a while, the grate and stuff in them would burn out. And it's, there's, it's not a really a big deal, uh, you know, to replace them or rebuild them. If, if you're going to burn wood in them, you don't have to put as heavy a grate back in it as they did with the coal. Uh, we've repaired several of these old stoves. We can use, we've used expanded metal, uh, shelf grates, uh, different things, you know, to, to put a new bottom back in them so that we can burn wood. I'll show you the inside of the stove here shortly. Okay, now next to your firebox and your ash pan, you've got your oven. Now notice on the front of the oven, there's a thermometer on there. It tells you the temperature of the inside of the oven. I'm sure when these first stoves were first built, they were pretty accurate, but you know, after 20 years or so, uh, they're not as accurate. So what you can do, you can go to the local hardware and you can buy a different um, thermometer. This one uh, goes up to, uh, I think, 800 degrees. Um, but anyhow, it's just got a magnetic back on it. When you open your oven, you can take it and place it on the inside to where it's easily to see. And after you use your oven a few times, you can start noticing what the temperature inside says versus what the temperature outside says. This particular oven here runs about 100 degrees off. So if it says 200 degrees on the front, I'm usually 300 degrees on the inside. I think as, as time goes on, the springs in them get stiffer and they don't work quite as well. But like I said, it's easy to replace them. I think I gave six bucks for the little magnetic thermometer and it works fantastic. Now on the inside, your oven's just a sheet metal, enamel coated. It's got a, a ratchet just like you have in the house, or your electric oven, I should say. But um, you can raise and lower it or take it completely out. We'll put Dutch ovens in there with three legs on the bottom and different things and, and we'll take, just take the rack out. It's easier that way. But now, on the, this oven, or stove, we have a, a drawer on the bottom that's got a storage just to put pans or whatnot in. Um, not, not all the stoves have it. Some of them have legs on the bottom, but if you're lucky, you might, may have one that does. Now, one thing I want to talk to you about for a moment. When you when you got your fire inside your firebox and, and it's burning, some of these fireboxes have a door on the front that's a front load, and some of them you have to raise the grate on the top to, to load your wood in. Um, if, the, if the door's on the front, it's a little more convenient because you don't have to move the pot that you're, you're cooking your soup or stew in with in order to put the wood in. All right, with your firebox being in here, you know, your fire has to have air to burn. Um, so there'll be two air controls on this stove. One that controls the airflow into your fire and one that controls the airflow for your oven. Um, if you've ever worked with a, just a regular wood stove, a wood heater, or what have you, you'll notice on the, on the, usually on the door or the front of your wood stoves, there's a draft control and that controls how much air comes into your fire. You know, the more air you give it, the faster it can burn and if you want it to burn low, you can cut the air way back. Uh, on this particular stove, there's a lever up on the top that uh, slides some, uh, a grate back and forth here on the side that, to control my airflow going in. Now, your second one we were talking about is your oven control. And that's probably the most important one on the entire stove if you want, if you want to use your oven. If you've got a, your heat here in your firebox and directly in the center of the rear is uh, your outbound side for your smoke and exhaust, you know, going to your stovepipe. The, the heat's going to come from here Go straight to the back of the stove and out your stovepipe. All right, well, 
that's all right if you're just using the top of the stove. But bear in mind, if you've got an oven here and you'd like to utilize it, then if you open the oven up and you've got a pan sitting in here and your firebox is here, then, you, then your oven's only hot on one side. Well, somewhere on your stove, I can show you where it's at on this one, but you need to be familiar with the stove that you're cooking on. Somewhere on that stove, I guarantee you, is either a pull lever, a slide bar, or a push up and down lever or something that controls your oven control. And what that does, if you're, if you're smoking your heat and want to go straight across and go out the back of the stove, you can, you can close that off and you can stop that option. And there's a second built-in option. The, the heat and the smoke, is, if you close it off and go straight out the back, and this is what it has to do. It has to come across the top, go down the sides, across the bottom, to the rear, up and out. So what you're doing basically is you're sending the heat and the smoke the long way around to get out. And what that does, it heats your oven on all four sides, including the rear. So now you've got even heat all over, which bear in mind, if your fire's right here, it's always gonna be a little hotter on this side. So a lot of times if I'm baking a cake or something, half or three quarters of the way through, I'll turn it one time, 180 degrees, just so that I know that I'm, I'm you know, done on, on both sides completely. Okay, as I told you, the, this particular stove loads from the top. So if I want to put wood in my firebox, I have to open this door right here to, to put the wood in. And see, that's what I was talking about it being a slight inconvenience. If I had a big pot of soup sitting up here, uh, you know, stewing and cooking, and I'm going to have to move that soup in order to gain access to my door. That's why sometimes it's more convenient if you do have a front loader. Um, but anyhow, that's not a big deal. I just open the door and I place the wood inside. Now... You'll find that the firebox on a wood cook stove is a lot smaller than, than your regular wood heater. So definitely take a moment, measure the length of, uh, of the opening that you have for the wood. Like on this particular stove, it's 16 inches. So I'll cut my wood 12 to 14 inches. If I cut it exactly 16 and then I'm only accessing half the door and try to put it in there, it's going to work against me. And I want to make this as, as simple and as enjoyable as possible. I want my focus to be on the great meal that I'm fixing to eat rather than trying to fight and put wood inside this. Thing. Okay, your firebox being directly under, underneath this side of the stove, it's, you know, obviously this side of the stove is going to be the hottest. Um, so if that's too hot to cook over, you just move over to the middle. Uh, or it's, you know, you're away from your fire a little bit, so it's going to be a little cooler. And if uh, most of the time, if you want to keep something warm, you can just set it all the way on the far side, the farthest away from it, because your heat is coming from here going straight out the rear. Now, bear in mind, if you've activated your oven and you've closed off that option, then your heat's going straight across uh, the top and down the side to escape. So that's going to be increasing the temperatures all the way across the front. Um, so if that happens, what I'll do a lot of times, I've got uh, two pieces of half inch square bar. Uh, I'll set those on top of the, the stove and then I'll put my frying pan on it. Well, what that does, it breaks direct contact uh, which will lower the temperature, not only elevating it, you know, up a half inch, but just simply because it's not touching a uh, cast iron frying pan to cast iron top, it'll, it'll lower your temperature. Uh, if that doesn't lower it enough, uh, I've got two pieces of one inch square tubing that I'll lay on top of here and I'll put my frying pan on it. I can usually find any temperature range that I want just uh, by taking a moment and, and working through the process. Um, and I use square because if, obviously if it's round uh, pieces of stock, they're going to roll and go everywhere. So by square ones, when I put them down, they stay, stay where I put them and they work.